I first got to Orlando in 2004, times were pretty lean. I didn't know anybody, I didn't know the area, I didn't have a lot of money. Still, I found this great place to hang out at. It was this curious mall on International Drive that had a surf shop, a skate park, a huge camping store with a magnified aquarium, a really bitchin' bookstore, and a cineplex. I think the original plan was to make it more of an attraction than a shopping center. In fact, this field I'm flying my drone over was the spot where they were going to build a Ron John surf park. Well, until the funding dried up, of course. It's called the Artagon Marketplace now. But before it was that, it was this. It was called Festival Bay, and it was really cool. On one side of the pond was Ron John Surf Shop, an excellent source of surf and skate gear. On the other was a Fuddruckers hamburger joint at a really cool English pub called the Cricketeer. <laughs> I still remember talking to a pretty shopkeeper into closing down for an hour or so so she could meet me for a cold one in there one time. Good times. Aside from the normal mall fare like Ann Taylor, Hot Topic, Shepler's Western Wear, and Stephen Berry's, what made Festival Bay unique was its collection of odd shops and attractions. Like this fanciful train for kids, or particularly... indoor and outdoor skate park. Side of the mall was, of course, Ron John's Surf Shop, heralded by this 30s Woody. I bought everything from surf wax to skateboard wheels here. 
Mostly it was fun to just walk through, since it really has that beach vibe. A rare thing since Orlando is some 65 miles from the ocean. But no less curious was this place, selling fanciful collectible figurines, along with semi-lethal stun guns. Yikes. <laughs> Oh, yeah. This one. Shocking. There were plenty of other places where the beach was represented, too. One featured a yellow submarine where kids could watch videos while mom tried on bikinis. must be haunted. On the back side of the mall was the Universal Store, the book warehouse where most of my books came from, the putting edge, a pitch dark indoor miniature golf course with colorful glow in the dark features. an A&W root beer restaurant, and the Cinemark Theater. Love that theater. One of my favorite things to do on a day off was go and see a movie at the Cinemark and then go outside and skate the parking lot. Early in the day it was usually empty, so it was like paddling out at a secret surf break. Only these hard waves were all mine. Great times, but nothing lasts forever, does it? Ah, Bethel Bay. They said they're going to close this place down. Isn't that sad? Hit by the super recession of 2009, Festival Bay went into a downhill spiral. Many of its most popular venues left and the mall became a ghost town. nobody here at all. I'm walking around an empty mall, photographing myself. There's nobody in Festival Bay. Wow, what a drag. However, in 2011, it was bought by a real estate company called the Lightstone Group, saved from oblivion, and transformed into the so-called anti-mall known as Artagon Marketplace. How is it different? Well, gone are the pools and fountains both outside and in. Just inside the front door, replacing the fountains, 
is a new climbing, balancing, and zipline attraction called Sky Trail. And down the hall, in space formerly occupied by Festival Bay's most popular retailer, Stephen Berry's, is what quickly became Orlando's most popular, to say nothing of the largest, comic book and gaming shop, Gods and Monsters. And right down the hall, poised for a 2017 opening, is NYZ, a zombie laser tag attraction similar to International Drive's Zombie Outbreak. All right. Now, we're what used to be called Festival Bay. See a flick. This is a clear, of course, a place that I used to skate all the time. In fact, if I ever get myself a longboard, which I'm thinking that might be my next expenditure, I'll definitely bring it here. A survivor of the transition, Cinemark remained open during the renovation of Artagon. And there were improvements, such as their now signature Luxury loungers. Around your side there. How cool is that, huh? Very cool. <laughs> Likewise, Book Warehouse hadn't seen its last chapter yet. Actually, it had remained open during the renovation as well. The big change in the anti-mall was gutting a large section of the interior, replacing the permanent shops with temporary cubicle-like structures housing specialty shops and local artisans. Sort of like a classy, permanent swap meet. Tragedy. The girl at next door at the beef jerky outlet told me that um, the Death by Salsa shop is gone. just called Death by Salsa. I can't believe I'm doing this to myself. <coughs> okay, ready? Yikes. Very hot, caution. Yikes. Wow. Oh, when that kicks in, that's, oh man. Yikes. Oh, man, <coughs> well-named Salra. Now, what was that, scorpion peppers in there? Yeah, that's good scorpion pepper and ghost pepper and, and a, a little bit of an extra. A little dab will do you with that. That's okay. for sure. They couldn't work the lease out, and so they left. No more hot sauce samples. No. And oh yes, Ron John was still there. Here we have Sector 9 boards. I think the one I really liked was... At least the deck was this one. Yeah, look at that. It's got a nice kick tail. It's nice and long. I like the wood look. I like the wire wheels though. But that one's got a nice kick tail to it. And now, for something completely silly. They sell superhero sunglasses, huh? Right, superhero sunglasses. Wow. It's Batman. <laughs> He's in my favorite action. This one does a lot of shirt though. Oh, I need the shield, right? <laughs> That's right. Superhero sunglasses. 
Now, back to the bike. Well, it looks like this time the mall, or should I say anti-mall, was on a roll. Interested in renovating and reopening vans under new ownership had been announced. A trampoline park called Sky Zone had been opened near the old van site. A new food court called Eat Street that would include a farmer's market and the zombie attraction were both slated for early 2017 openings. So it came as a huge surprise to everyone when the floor dropped out. Despite the seemingly bright future awaiting Artagon with the arrival of 2017, on January 12th, without pomp, ceremony, or even any warning, the Lightstone Group notified the tenants of the Artagon Marketplace that it would be taking them all in a, quote, different direction, unquote. Well, I guess this would be the question. To be, or not to be. So, they would be closing the mall for good and everyone had to be out by Thursday, January 26th. Too bad. So sad. Thanks for showing up. And so, just two years after Artagon Marketplace rose from the ashes of Festival Bay, it was clearly not to be. Over Gods and Monsters, the success story to top all others in Artagon's short history, the gods looked as if they'd suffered Ragnarok. And the monsters, particularly those just across the hallway, never got a chance to show themselves at all. Two days before closing, with cheery rock and roll playing over the loudspeakers as if nothing had changed, the place looked like a mining town after the ore had played out. This place has now turned into pretty much a ghost town. I mean, they had tried to redo this particular mall so that all of these little, all these little spaces, kind of like a, almost a permanent swamp meet, would uh, offer lo local artisans and people uh, some place to display and sell their wares. At first, well, just open booths. Then after a while they put these short storefronts up to them. And even though now they're about to open up the New York Zombie Exchange and the trampoline park, glass blowers, renovation of Ron John's, these are the last days of what was once Festival Bay. <laughs> wow. Now this is for a major bummer. They just opened a magic shop that I just found out about, and now it's closing. But perhaps saddest of all was the notice on the door of the book warehouse. That long-time bookseller that had survived the last new direction was turning its last page, closing up shop with all the others. So sad. I can't believe it's closing down, finally. Hard to believe that's the last time I'll ever walk into the book warehouse. Like I said, almost every book I ever owned was from there. Every shop owner I've talked to said the same thing, too. That management's not saying anything. Some of them seem to have heard that there's going to be mall improvements. Others heard that it was an amusement park company. Nobody here who's actually in the mall knows a thing other than, on Thursday, it all goes away. Well, for a while anyway, you'll still be able to buy a gun at Bass Pro, eat a greasy burger at Fuddruckers, jump on a trampoline at Sky Zone, watch a movie at Cinemark, or play around with miniature golf in the dark at Putty Edge, which, like the book warehouse, 
had been around since the old days of Festival Bay and has also survived the last renovation. Then of course there's Ron Johns. And who could forget trick-or-treating last Halloween? Happy Halloween! Sure. All right. We got trick or treat candy from Ron Johns. <laughs> that was certainly fun, but there'll be no more treats given out at this mall. Only the terrible trick played on its tenants, which makes this sign, left over from the Exodus, sound like the punchline of a really bad joke. While none of the tenants seem to have a clue as to what is going to be the fate of Artagon once Festival Bay, the news has reported that this might be the fate of the so-called anti-mall. According to Orlando Business Journal, the Lightstone Group, owners of the Artagon property, quote, may be close to selling the land to a leading U.S. theme park operator considering plans to build a massive new project on more than 200 acres of land that includes a majority of the Artagon and 78 parcel of land just south of the mall." Unquote. Orlando's WFTV Eyewitness News, in fact, reported the speculation that Cedar Fair, Hershend Family Entertainment, which operates Dollywood, and even Six Flags may be the companies eyeing the property, since all three have expressed interest in breaking into the lucrative Orlando theme park market, a move applauded by nearby Funspot, since it would breathe new life into the International Drive area. Whether this is true or not, who can really tell? The only thing that's really certain for the Artagon marketplace is that on the 26th, the art is gone.